I'm Chris, and in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about a very effective way to memorize flashcards. So if you see what I'm holding in my hand right here, this is a flashcard. It's got two sides to it. If you're a student, you should absolutely be using these regularly. Flashcards are one of the best ways to get content down. It's not a great way to do practice problems and to sort of interact with the material that you're learning, but it definitely is a great way to make sure that you at least have the facts straight or at least have the equations in mind um, when you're getting ready to start tackling more complex material and uh, integrating that into answering the kinds of questions that you'll see on tests and exams in school. So here's an approach to memorizing flashcards and this is really a good measure of really knowing when you're done, really understanding when you actually know the material well enough. So this is going to be called the three pass approach. And basically with flashcards, a lot of students have a stack of flashcards and kind of do this. They look at one side, they look at another side, they say, oh, okay, I know it. And then they move on to the next flashcard. But when you're looking at the answer in front of you, it's very easy to kind of trick yourself into thinking you really know something that if you were actually tested on that material, you might not know as well as you do when you have it written in front of you. So we really need to make sure that we're kind of testing ourselves as we go through flashcards. So the first time through, Pass one, we're going to take a look at a stack of flashcards and you should minimize the size of your stack of flashcards. You should make it 10 or fewer cards at a time. If you have more than 10 cards to remember, whether you're going through vocab or maybe equations for a particular math test or you know, if you're a pre-calc student memorizing trig identities, whatever the case might be, you want to look at the front and back your first time through. So those 10 cards or those 8 cards or however many you decide to put in that one stack. You can combine stacks later on, but if you have 10 or fewer, you're going to look at the front and back of each card just to get exposed to that material. And you're going to do that until you feel like you really have all 10 memorized, that you know each card in that stack. So that might mean you look at each one once or twice or five times. That part's up to you to decide how many times is enough to where you really know that material. So after you've gone through with that first pass, looking at the front and back of each card, then you're going to go through and you're going to look at the front only. And here's where you want to start being a little self-critical in terms of whether or not you really know this material. If you look at the front only and you know what's on the back of each card and you're able to correctly get that information down, then you can move on to the third pass. But if you look at the front only and you say to yourself, okay, I went through those, let's say, 10 cards and I knew seven of them, but there were three that I wasn't sure of. Rather than just putting those three cards in some separate pile that you're going to review later, take all ten of those cards. If you don't get it when you go through the front only, if you don't get all ten cards, or however many cards are in your stack, go back to pass one and look at the front and back of each again. And then after you've got those down, again, test yourself with the front only. If you look at the front side of the card only and you're able to get all of the cards in the stack, then it's time to go ahead and move on to the third pass. And this is probably the most important one to really make sure that you're ready for that quiz or test or whatever it is that you're preparing for. And it's also the one that I think is most commonly skipped over by students. And this is oftentimes right here in pass three, the big difference between a student who earns a 96 or a 98 or even a 100 on a test and a student who still earns a good grade but maybe something more like an 88 or an 85 or an 83 on a test um, is this third pass right here. And for this, what you're going to do on the third pass is you're actually going to cover up the entire stack of flashcards, set it off to the side, and you're going to see that if you can get all of the cards directly from memory. And that's really, really, really important to make sure that you're comfortable enough with that information that not only can you recognize it when you look at the front and back, not only can you quiz yourself by seeing the maybe vocab word presented to you and then identifying the definition correctly or whatever the case may be, but if you can actually set that stack of flashcards off to the side and synthesize all of that information, generate it yourself and make sure that you know what all of those cards say on both the front and back sides, all from memory, then you can go ahead and check off that stack of cards as something that you truly know, 
and you can go ahead and move on to the next stack of 10 or fewer cards and repeat the same process. So if you have a vocab quiz with, let's say, 40 vocab words that you need to memorize, then you're going to repeat this process four times, 10 cards each, until you know all of them. And then you can shuffle them all together and use them the way that you're used to traditionally using flashcards. But when first learning the material to really make sure you know it, you want to make sure that you take advantage of this three-pass approach. For more, please feel free to visit our website. And thanks for watching.